So let's give you a tip on brushes. For today's project, we're painting this super cute spring sign with lots of pops of spring colors, but everything is really close together and really tiny. Don't worry, we have the tips, tricks, tools, everything you need to know about painting in these small spaces without making a mess. So I already base coated my surface today. We have a Q&A tutorial for you on how to base coat. We will link that above so you can check that out if you have any questions on base coating. We are going to put our stencil on. We are going to tape it down. So when you are adding your stencil to your surface, you are always going to want to tape in two locations. So if we tape in one location, just at the top corner here, and we knock the stencil with our hand, it's going to move. So we always recommend taping it in two places at least, and we normally do opposite corners. So now if I try to pull this up and I wiggle it, it is not going anywhere. So our first tool that we are going to talk about when we are painting in small spaces is tape. So we just used our tape to tape down the edges, but mm -hmm. Tape is also a great masker, and this is what we used to mask all of our projects with before we made another tool, which I'm going to show you very soon. So as we start to paint this project, the words are really close together. So there's a big chance when you're painting that you will ghost, and so when we talk about ghosting, it means when we're painting one color, we accidentally ghost or get paint into another area that we didn't mean to. So what I'm going to do as we start to paint our words is just add a little bit of tape underneath the word life, which is close to another word. So we're just going to take this off and then it'll help us from bleeding under or ghosting on that next section. So let's start with some stencil basics. We like to use a dome brush when we are stenciling. And let me tell you why. A lot of stencilers use a flat brush. This one has been cut off and it is very flat. So when you use a flat brush and you put it down on your project, the majority of the brush is touching your project. So then when you paint and you push it down, there is a chance for bleeding under because so much of the brush is touching your project. So with the dome brushes, a very small amount of the brush actually touches your project, just really the tip of it because it is curved. So you're not getting a lot of brush on your project and then you have a less chance of bleeding under. We will add some paint to our brush and then the next step is going to be to come over to the side and swirl off about 15 times. This is offloading your brush. If you take it to your hand and paint on it and it is goopy or looks really wet, that means you have too much paint on your brush. You want it to be a light dusting because stenciling is a layers game. So now we're going to come to our project and lightly swirl onto our project. So there are a couple of different motions you can do when you are stenciling. You have the swirling motion or you have the stippling motion, which is a patting up and down. Most times you will see us using the swirling motion to give you the really light dusty layer. You can see that we did this whole section with just putting the paint on one time. And the beautiful thing about swirling and that we offloaded some of the paint is now that we went from left to right, it's already dry because it's such a small thin layer of paint. So we're gonna come back over here and swirl one more time and you can see this tape here helped prevent us from bleeding over into the next words. Once I get this second layer on here, we'll show you how much paint showed up on that tape so you can see what we prevented happening with the bleeding under. So we have our second layer swirled on here and we have people ask us 
often, how many layers do I need to paint for my project? That is really going to be personal preference. If you want something really bold and bright, you might have to do three or four layers. If you want something light and dusty, then one or two layers may do. So we've done two layers on this. I'm going to have you look at the tape. So see how much pink is on that tape. If we would not have taped off, that would have come down into the letters and bled under. So tape is the first thing to use to help prevent mistakes when you're painting in small spaces. So let's move on to our number two tool and that's our multi-masker. So this is what we use now most times so that we're not using tape. This is just a piece of mylar that we made into a crazy shape so that we don't have to tape off all the time. The multi-masker is an amazing tool. And while we're doing this, I'm actually going to kind of talk about two of these tools at once. And we use often, when you see us doing our stencil videos, we use our biggest dome brush, which is the 5 8 brush. This covers a lot of area very quickly, so we use this often, but we also have several different sizes. So our, we're gonna use tool two and three here, and we have smaller brushes that help get into the tiny areas. So for most of this project, we're going to use small brushes so that we don't cover as much area because there's not as much area to cover. So we're going to go into our, this is our 3 8 brush, and we are going to paint the inside here of the flower. So we're going to get our pink loaded on our brush just the same way we did and use our multi-masker. You can move it around, see which way fits. That little curve fits perfectly around the circle. We're going to do a tapping motion here. So when we were stenciling our words, we did the swirling there was more room to stencil. However, when we are covering the small areas, sometimes you'll find that doing the stippling motion is easier because you can get it right in that area that you want and you don't have to worry about stenciling off. So look how quick and easy that was to use the multi-masker and just stipple in the area that we want that little pink to be without making a mess on the other portion of the flower. So we will throw this in here and we're going to go into the yellow and we're going to do the same thing. So now I'm going into a 1 fourth brush, which is a little bit smaller. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow onto our paintbrush and come back in here. Now, if you're going to use the same area of your multi-masker, you will want to make sure it's dry. You'll also want to consider what color you use. So if I would use this multi-masker and there's pink on it, and then I would try to do the yellow over top of it, there is a chance that the pink would bleed into my project. You're gonna have that with pinks and reds if you're trying to do a white, a really light gray or yellow over top of them. So think about that with your multi-masker. You can wash this just like you would wash and clean a regular stencil. We have a video on that that we'll share as well. So I'm gonna go back in here and this time I'm going to cover up the center of the flower and then just start stippling. Now, if you have a good eye and a good hand, you can potentially do this without using a multi-masker. The bridging on this flower is kind of thick so you could potentially go around and not use anything and just be really careful about where you're painting so now that we're going in here and you know what we're feeling really brave and we took away our multi-masker now, what happens if we go in for our second layer and, oh, look what happened. I got a little bit of yellow paint on my flower. So that's where our next tool comes into place and that is our mistake fixing tool. So we have one of our favorite tools here 
is the click eraser. This is a PVC eraser. It's a white eraser and it just goes up and down as you need it. If you do this dry and you come to your project, nothing happens. However, if you get it wet, you can erase the wet paint that was just put on your project. So we'll get it wet, we'll come over here, and we will be able to erase that yellow paint. Now, you only have a few minutes to do this. After about five minutes, your paint will dry and cure and you won't be able to erase. So when you are stenciling, if you're stenciling in small spaces or just on your project in general, I was always afraid to be a peeker and look under my stencil because I, I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to line it up. But as you're working on your project, we always recommend peeking so that if there is a problem, you can catch it before the paint dries. So since we painted the pink and we painted the yellow within a short amount of time, when I tried to get the yellow off, a little bit of the pink came off too, but that's okay. We can come back on here. We can replace our stencil where it was, and then we can go back and add just a little bit more pink to the center of that without the yellow. So I'm going to use a, the smallest brush that we have, which is the 1 8 brush and I'll show you how easy it is just to use the tiny brush to get in here to some of the really tiny little spots. So you could use a larger brush for it, but if you have bought a set of brushes and you're not really sure what to use the tiniest brushes for, this is a perfect thing to use them for. They're just really teeny tiny circles and we're just tapping along to get those filled. And since we're not using a big brush, we don't have to worry about it being too large for this little area and getting in somewhere else. So the last tool that we want to talk about is the round brush. So as we're stenciling and may, if there is a chance that you ghost or you might get something where you don't want it, then a round brush is a really great option for cleaning things up. So I'm going to get a couple different parts uh, colors of green here because we have two little leaf areas that are really close together and we're going to show how to fix those if you get a little bit of color where you don't want it. So we're going to start with our light green and I'm going to continue to use a small brush and dip it in our paint. We're going to come over here and um, offload our brush even if we're using a small brush we do want to still offload because if there's too much paint, then it is going to increase the chances of bleeding under. One thing about stippling that is nice is that if you stipple, it's going to cover a little bit more area quicker. In the small spaces, it's just so nice to stipple and get it done and then move on to the next part. So now I'm going to go into my darker color. Since my light green and my dark green are very similar, I'm just going to dirty brush. So if you don't have a lot of brushes and maybe you're new to stenciling and you're trying things out, so let's give you a tip on brushes. If I'm painting a lot of pink on my project, what I will do is I will paint all my pink at one time with the same brush so that I don't have to paint it put it in there, find another brush to paint the next portion. Because when you use the brushes, one of the things that you want to think about with stenciling is that when you wash your brushes, you have to let them dry completely before using them again. If you have a wet brush and you put it in your paint, it, it, it will thin out the paint so that also increases your chances of bleeding under. There are several things that can be the cause to your bleeding under on your projects. So if you're thinking about how to use your brushes, use all of one color with one brush at one time, or if you're using similar colors, then you can go in and use what we call the dirty brush. So I did the light green with my small brush, and now I'm going to go into the dark green, which is a similar color, and I'm going to offload it here, and then come in and stipple or swirl to get that filled in. So now that 
we're doing this. I'm not being very cautious. And I got some dark green in my light green. You can go back through with your <clears throat> light green and you can stipple and fix it. Or we can use our round brush here. The round brush is going to be something that you use just to clean up a little bit of your project. So a lot of artists have the round brush and it is one that you're going to use more freehand than with your stencil. So we just put a teeny tiny bit of paint on here and then now we're just going to paint right over top of the dark green. The round brush is also really great for fixing the mistakes and lines if you do happen to bleed under. So I could get this wet and clean it off. We have a couple of videos on how to clean your brushes, so make sure to check those out because each brush is going to be different with our foam brushes that we paint on the background or with our dome brushes, we just stick them in a water bucket, paint them when, or clean them when we're done. But a round brush, you can clean with water, dry it off and go on to your next step. So say that we had some issues around life that we wanted to fix, or let's actually look here, see this flower I have ghosted. I didn't tape off, I just kind of started swirling around and so there's two little pieces of pink right here. So what if those aren't supposed to be there, that's actually supposed to be the color of the background, we can get a little bit of our background color on our palette, go into our round brush and just mask those right there, cover them up and voila. Once that dries, we'll put another couple of coats on it so that you can't see it and then your mistakes are finished. So now that you know what tools to use, you can check out the description below to get links so you can add all of them to your toolbox. If you love this video, be sure to subscribe to the Studio R12 YouTube channel and ring the bell so you can be notified anytime we add new videos, tips, tricks, and tutorials.